In this video, I'm going to go over random number generation in C. So to make random numbers in C, we're going to use the rand function. And I'm going to include stdlib.h, because that's the library where the function is defined. And we call the rand function like this, rand with no arguments. And rand is going to return an int value between 0 and some very large integer value. And what we could do is print out the results, just to see how it works. So we'll say printf random 1% d slash n, and we'll print out the result of calling rand. And we'll do it a few times. So we'll print out a sequence of random numbers here. So we'll say random one, two, three, four. And we'll do a compilation over here. And then we'll run it. And we get this sequence of what looks like random numbers here. The problem is if I call it again, I get the exact same sequence. So in C, we have what's really called pseudo random number generation. So it's not totally random. What we could do though, is we could use what's called a seed to make a different sequence of random numbers. So by default, the seed is one, but I could change the seed by calling the srand function with a different number. So I could say here srand, and this is a function that comes with stdlib.h, and I could say two. So when I call srand with two, what I'm doing is I'm giving a different seed to the random number generator, which is then gonna produce a different sequence of numbers over here. So let's actually compile this now and run it, and I now get a different sequence of numbers. Now the only problem is if I call it again, I'm going to get the same sequence of numbers. I'm giving it a different seed, but I'm still giving it the same seed each time. Before it was one, now it's two. So it's a different sequence, but it's the same sequence each time. What I'm really going to want to do to get a different sequence of numbers each time is give it the current time or some other number that's going to change. So what I could do is include time.h, and this has a function inside of it called time. So I could say time null. And if I call time with null, it's going to return the current time. So what that's going to do is give it a different number each time the program is called. There's other ways you could do this, but this is one popular way, is to give it the current time, because that's going to be different each time the program is run. So let's save this, and we'll recompile it and run it. And now if we run it again, you'll see the sequence is different. Like this number here is different than this number here. This number here is different than this number here. And what's going on here is we're giving the random number seed function here a different seed value each time. And so our sequence of random numbers is different each time, which is what we want. Now, like I said, this is still pseudo random number generation. It wouldn't be something we want to use for say cryptography, but for a lot of purposes, say maybe like a game or something like that, it's probably good enough. It's going to be good enough for many use cases. Now, oftentimes with random numbers, we care about the range that they could be in. So there's actually a constant value in stdlib.h called randmax, and that actually tells us the maximum value that a random number could be. So let's actually print that out. We'll say your printf randmax percent d slash n, and we'll output randmax. And this is a constant value defined in here, and it's just the maximum value for a random number. So if I clear this here, compile it and run it, I see that randmax is this huge int value here. And the reason why we might care about that is we often care about the possible range of values of random numbers. We often want our random numbers to be within a certain range. So for example, maybe we're trying to print out random numbers between one and 20. Maybe it's a lottery or something like that. Let's actually do an example of that. So I'm gonna say here, four int i is equal to zero, i is less than six, i plus plus. And let's actually print out random numbers between one and 20. So at first, let's just print out the random value that's generated without doing anything here. So we'll just say random. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a random value with the rand function. So I'm going to say int random is equal to rand. And we're just going to print out random. So initially, these are going to be huge numbers like this. So we'll do a recompilation here and run it. We get these huge numbers here. Let's say though I want them in the range of 1 to 20. One common way to do this is with the modulus operator. So if I say here modulus 20, the modulus operator, it basically does an integer division between the result of this and 20, but it returns the remainder. And so if you think about the way division works, the remainder of anything divided by 20 is always gonna be between zero and 19, just by the definition of division. And so if I say rand modulus 20, this is gonna give me random numbers in the range of zero to 19. So if I save this here now, do a clear, recompile and run it, I'm gonna get random numbers in the range of zero to 19. 
And you can see them there, you know, zero and 19. That's the range that we can expect there. Now, if I wanted the range to be between one and 20, I could shift that up because this is always going to be between zero and 19. And if I add one to this, that would shift the range up to be one to 20. So I'm going to say here one plus, and then the result of this expression here. So let's actually recompile this and run it. And now my range is going to be between one and 20. So you can see some twenties in there. And if I run it again enough times, we should hopefully eventually get a one there. And so this is now going to produce random numbers in the range of one to 20. See, maybe because I need six numbers for some kind of lottery or raffle or something like that. So this sort of expression here with the min number in a desired range and the max number in a desired range used like this is actually fairly common to see in random number generation. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.